Do you ever get? I always get nervous on podcasts. Really? Why? I don't know. It's not. Yeah, I mean, we just chat about like, the same yeah, way we've been I mean, talking for the last, you know, last thirty minutes or so. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, that's just kind of how I take it. You know, um, you know, kind of how we talked about. You know, we're just really just catching up. I know it's been like what we'd say, like a little over two years. I'd say. Yeah, it's it's been a while. It was like summer, spring, summer, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Dang. What What was the last project we? I think the last one we did was that Eddie George. Oh, the the. Uh, I don't know. Or did we have anything after that? I think we, there may have been something here, there after that. I don't know. Hmm. No, I don't think so. Maybe no. I think I think there was like an opportunity to do something with um, with Ross. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I I never I never was able to 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 make it out. But I think like the last time we actually worked on something was during whenever yeah that that Eddie George thing. So that was about like two years. I think that was like April May of like 2019. Oh, wow. So it's it's been a minute. That's crazy. Yeah, dang. Oh, um, you know. So I guess with that being said, like, yeah, hey, we can get it started, man. So okay, sick. Yeah, Aiden. Yeah. Thank you for coming on the Creative Block Podcast. You know, like we talked about, um, you know, this podcast is just, I, I use it as an excuse to chop it up with fellow creatives and, you know, mostly, it's been mostly just friends and, and really just catching up. You know, everybody kind of gets, uh, uh, you know, everybody gets focused on what they're doing day to day and, you know, we don't really get to chop it up as much with everybody. Uh, so I, I use this as an opportunity to like not only connect with other creatives and, you know, catch up with friends, but... Um, you know, for, for the listeners, you know, they, they're able to gain something. I feel like a lot of the listeners are a lot of people coming up in a creative space, doing, you know, their own thing, kind of figuring things out on their own. Um, so I've, I've been wanting to use, I've been using this as kind of like a, uh, another outlet for other creatives just to kind of listen and, you know, be able to take away like little tidbits from everybody's, you know, different journey. Cause I feel like even though we all follow similar paths, everybody has like, you know, everybody's like in their own like lane and doing things slightly different. And, yeah. you know, there's all these different niches and different areas that, you know, it, that just kind of takes everybody that uh, I think is cool and, and it's awesome to talk about. So I guess with that being said, you know, let's get a little brief intro who you are um, and yeah. what you do. And we just kind of get started from there. For sure. Yeah. My name is uh, Aiden Minton. So I'm, a, I guess, creative director, filmmaker, um, content creator, um, you know, anything digital content in that space. Um, not really, I guess, a specific definition of what I do. Did mostly uh, filmmaking, uh, content creation, uh, photo and video um, for, you know, commercial space or like a lot of social media brands, um, work in the music industry um, and with uh, doing a lot more sports nowadays with uh, professional teams. Um, but yeah, just kind of all over the place. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm 20, just recently turned 23 years old. Um, last, my last, I'm in my last semester, uh, at college and yeah, I guess that, that kind of sums me up in a brief couple, couple sentences. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, what we, what we call, and a lot of people, I mean, I guess I kind of, uh, categorize myself in that, you know, as this content creator, yeah. which I, I hate, I, you know, we, I, we talk about it too, where it's like, I hate the, the term in the sense that it's, yes, that's what you, you know, that's what we do. Um, but I feel like it's. I don't know. I, I, I think there's what the for what we do there there could be I don't know, I think a better term, but we right, do right. We, you know, we're aware of many hats and uh right. master of a, a lot of different skills. Many uh, trades, unique, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 unique because I feel like a lot of people, especially now coming up with the whole <sighs> people who do not follow the traditional film path to where, you know, like, okay, you know, you went to film school that uh you know, kind of follow the, you know, traditional film space where, you know, you start off as a PA, then you kind of work your way up to like working on camera. Nowadays, uh, you know, a lot of people like us, they're, you know, we pick up a camera, we just kind of figure it, figure it out and end up doing a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, I think, I think, uh, it's, it's like the filmmaker versus content creator, whatever you want to define, you know, uh, it's like, we live in a different world that today that, you know, I mean, it's all a, a, a I don't know type of filmmaking, um, but it's the story's different. You know, it's not all necessarily like uh, you know, like you said, we all we, we wear we wear many hats. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I, I feel like with the whole content creation thing, it's uh, if you do anything on social nowadays, you're you are a content creator, yeah. and 
I don't know. I, I I know some people don't like the term because they they kind of feel like oh you're lumping me in with you know TikTokers or whatever. And like I even yeah. think and and like I've I've heard people who kind of like in the traditional film space they're they're kind of turned off by the whole reels TikTok yeah, to, TikTok nah, sure. and social media and. It's I don't know I feel like it's just a different way of of how content is consumed nowadays. So like there's right. nothing wrong with that, but right. we're we're content creators. Yeah. Um. So I, I guess with that being said, like you you mentioned that you're still in school, mm-hmm. which I, I know. Last time we we talked, like you were considering like dropping out, <laughs> and like really, uh, yeah, I, I mean I, I always I always thought about it. I think I don't know, how old was I when I was. 20, 2019, right? So yeah, was, so I think you were like in your like. Your uh, I think I was just in my your, I was in my sophomore yeah. year of of college. I think that was the year. Um, dang. So I'm a, I'm a senior now. What? Well, so I took a semester off. That, I think that was the year I went on tour. Actually, so yeah, that, I think you had said you were gonna take like a sabbatical right. or a semester off because you you had the opportunity to go on tour. Yeah. And then like after that, like I don't know if you went right back to school or right. like well, I remember having a conversation with you where you I were think, like, I'm probably just gonna drop out and just keep doing this. <laughs> yeah, that was I think that was the idea. But then literally, <laughs> looking back, it's funny. Like who would have guessed it? But like, COVID hit literally the month after tour ended. So I got back uh, like the end of December 2019, and then. Um, we had, like, I had other tours lined up, um, and then, uh, I think, you know, February comes around and COVID, yeah, so kind of messed everything up, but, the, and then I think I was like, well, I kind of, like, you know, have to go to school, not necessarily, but my family really, really, like, pushed for it, yeah. um, yeah, I think the last time I actually talked to you was right before I left, yeah, I remember I talked yeah, to you about so it, and yeah. you were like, yeah, and that was the conversation I was telling you, I was like, yeah, probably, realistically, like, I would like to be able to do school, but it would be great if I could just not have to, you know. So, and what's what's what has that been like with? So yeah. you know, COVID hits, and I mean, I I, I want to talk about like the whole concert and and, and the tour and, and being sure, yeah. some of that back then. But like I, now with like COVID and all that, was that kind of like opportunity? Okay, well, I guess I'm not doing really anything else. Can I can go back yeah. to school? Was that kind of the thing? Or it was like, yeah, there was no reason I couldn't do it, and I mean. I don't know. I, my family is, is very much so uh, believes in, the, you know, the traditional, you know, go to school, get your degree, which I respect. And I there's no reason I couldn't do both at the time. So I didn't really have an argument against it. Mm. Um, I mean, it would be gr- honestly like my preference. I think it would have been great for me to maybe just focus on my career. And but I think, you know, it's always great to to make the, the family happy. And, and there's no reason why you know I couldn't do it. I'm, I was kind of in like that mid midway mark of like junior year so um it was it was a hard you know COVID made it easier to stay in school if that yeah. makes sense and you were like in communications or was it like film yeah film so my major is uh film and media production okay yeah so film major like what what is that like uh well like, so it was a lot different during COVID I mean it's like how are you gonna like you know collaborate shoot edit like make films in school it's not the same during COVID which is like even more it was like this is a waste of my time and just money but Pre-COVID, um, you know, it was just a lot like, I mean, learning the softwares of, you know, editing softwares, uh, VFX, um, shooting, editing, like, you know, a lot of that stuff. But also, like, you know, you got your your, your basic courses, like, you know, uh, marketing and stuff like that on top of it. And so, yeah. So, and then you're still, you're still right now, right? You're, you're yeah, finishing up? This is my, hopefully the next semester I'll, I'm graduating, so. And and how have you been able to kind of uh, manage that? I, I assume you're kind of doing it remote because, like, I know you yeah. live in LA, so it's kind of been online. Right. Have you had to do any in person, or have you just been able to completely be online? No, yeah. I've, I, so I moved out to LA. I think back in uh, at the end of April, May, actually May. Um, so ever since then, all my school has been online. Um, I told my family I'd be out there for the summer. Uh, it was kind of like an excuse just to get out there. And uh, I, I think, you know, after I got a taste of it, it was like I need to kind of, you know, stay out here just for the benefit of, of my career. And um, I've, I've stayed out there since. Um, came back, obviously, for the holidays. But ever since then, yeah, I've just been remote um, doing school and work, I guess, remote. So uh, I guess let's kind of backtrack a little bit to yeah. – um, kind of where I guess where it all started for you so obviously you're you know do photography videography you, a little bit of everything um you know you've been able to grow a, a decent sized social media following um I know you know a lot of your work has been with 
you know, a lot of social media influencers more, more recently, you know, professional teams, you've been like with the U S men's uh, national soccer team. Um, so I guess kind of like how did, how did it all, how did it all get started? You know, when did Aiden start, you know, taking pictures, doing video and, and what kind of got you, what drew you into the, the yeah. whole content creation game? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think I really fell in love with, uh, just like taking photos and then that kind of led to video. Um, and then I fell in love with kind of like, I wouldn't say I didn't f like editing, but you know, specifically like being able to, to make the content better, like editing is a huge portion of that. So, um, you know, I think I just kind of fell in love with that process and, um, one after the other just started like getting really passionate about making my own, like, pa like, you know, just random edits for, for Instagram and, you know, following a bunch of other creators, uh, growing up, like is, is cool to see. Um, and now like, you know, have some of them be my friends today, like that I've met out in LA is like super full circle, which is sick. But I think, you know, following them from the beginning, seeing like how they kind of started out, um, that was very inspiring. And it was kind of like where maybe I like got the spark to like kind of in, you know, have that style. Um, and you know, just kind of reaching out, uh, working with as many people as I could, you know, trying to trying to get my foot in the door with, you know, all, all these different influencers, different type of people, um, just, just trying to work and, and grind and like get better. Um, and that's kind of just how it's, it's been. Is that kind of what like drove you to, to kind of go like the film route with school or was, was that something that was kind of decided beforehand? Yeah, no, actually. So I, so I played, I played soccer at, at um, in college, my first uh, two years, um, I, I played like well, the whole thing actually originally in high school, I was like, I'm, I'm playing in college. Like, um, but you know, I, I was trying to figure out what it is like I wanted to do. I fell in love with film, like kind of ended my year, senior year of college. It was like literally didn't even know where I was going to school until like the last couple months of the semester. It, it all kind of fell into place. Um, and actually, so, you know, McHugh, um, yep. yeah, Andrew McEwen, uh, for those who don't know, he's like a, a social media soccer influencer on Instagram. Yeah. So yeah, he was like one of the, I think he was for sure one of the um, people that really like kind of took me under his wing and like showed me the ropes of like, he kind of already mastered the whole social media game um, and like editing. And I was like, a, a, you know, brand new to the space and I had no idea what I was doing. And it's just super like obsessed with content creation or just like, you know, that, that whole side of uh, filmmaking. And so he was really like a key factor in like, you know, helping me like kind of teaching me the ropes of that and um, just like having someone to work, work on that with um, in, in my first year of, of school was huge, you know, you could mix like, you know, my love for soccer and also like creating content was like perfect. And I think that kind of led into, you know, then more commercial work and doing stuff for clients and, and using that style of, of like editing for social media, that fast paced like stuff, um, and other, other work and, and just like taking that elsewhere and getting to like, you know, eventually obviously like do stuff with, uh, the national team and yeah. So you guys were in school together? Yeah. Yeah. We played, we played soccer. Um, we both went to a uh, capital university. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cause I remember, yeah. So I had him on. Yeah. I listened to that one. Really? Uh, that, yeah. 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 So I had him on shoot. When did, uh, when we recorded that, that was like literally before, um, I'm trying to remember it. I think it was like shortly right after like that first like quarantine and like people started kind of going back out, I think. Gotcha. And it was a while back. Yeah. So it was a, so I recorded his a little, we recorded that a little over a year ago and uh, I guess year and a half now, dude, like I, you know, we were talking about earlier, like, I feel like my sense of time has just been. Yeah, dude. I feel, I feel you, man. I feel yeah, you. So, like, I don't know. I don't know if it was. It feels like it was six months ago, but it was, like, almost, like, bro, like, two and a half years ago. Yeah. Um, but, like, whenever we recorded the episode, you know, we talked about how, you know, he, he's been really big on the, like, figured out. I feel like he's. He, he cracked the code early. Yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure. He was very like, good at going he, he figured out the formula, like, where, you know, we talked about on, yeah. on, on his episode where, on where, you know, he has, you know, yeah, he Crack the formula has this like process of the these are the these are the you know he knew the algorithm before the term algorithm was like you know like modern day like you know just common use like yep everyone talks about oh we write the algorithm like this man was telling me in my freshman year of college he was like dude you got it like this is the algorithm I was you know like it's crazy he was he was early for yeah, sure yeah I mean this was you know like four or five years ago almost like Instagram was so new 
you know, and like he's been, I mean, even to this day, he's, he does this shit on TikTok and Instagram and, yeah. and you know, it's, uh, you know, when we talked about it, like his, like, yeah, you know, his, he was saying his, uh, a lot of his audience is like in Europe and, you know, obviously the whole soccer space. Overseas, and, yeah. And it's, 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 it's amazing just being able to see how, you know, you think that it's random when it happens, which I, I there, there is some randomness to it, mm-hmm. but there really is a formula and, and there are, you know, there are things that if you do very specific things, yeah. you know, Mr. Beast is another <laughs> example of like, I guess that's like the ultimate example of somebody who's like cracked it. And, very clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and is able to do that. So, you know, you, you said he kind of like took you under his wing and, and that kind of like what, what propelled you to kind of, you know, continue learning and, and, yeah. and start doing it on your own. So, um, with, with that, like, you know, what were some of the things like early on that kind of like, you know, made you like now, you know, start working on your own, whether it be like freelancing or, or creating content on your own? Like what, what was that like? Uh, like the process or? No, like, uh, like, I, I guess kind of like what were, what were some of the things that you did early on that kind of, you know, helped continue, you know, you continue to, to grow and like learn and just absorb, you know? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, like I said earlier, just, you know, watching other people I was very inspired by, um, like I think that helped me want to learn more to see where they were at, um, but yeah, I, I think I always wanted. I always tried to make uh, stuff for myself um, and like push it out as as much as possible, just so people could could see that. Um, I think it's it's cool. You can like go back and see like the progression of like content that I post. Like it just like gets better as you as you go gets actually gets worse as you go down but like as you you know yeah but i mean the the further back you look you can see the transition of like oh you know this is you know these are you know when you started out and you started putting out content and Mm -hmm. you know it it was good i mean i i've I've been a fan of your work for you know for as long as i've known you but you you can see you know yeah you definitely see the progression to you know like your most recent work is like you know like there's a lot of you know vfx and you know very um I, don't know, I, I feel like uh, like your style has very uh, has like very like it, it's unique in the sense that it still feels kind of like old school like I don't want to say like travel videos but like I, I feel like that that was a lot of like early on that was a lot of inspiration right. for a lot yeah, of your work definitely but you can still feel a little a little bit of of that but with you know it's just like this whole modern twist where you're like you watch your videos and like you're you're hooked like right off the jump and. Right. You know, is that something that you like intentionally do to like you really hone in and like trying to yeah. get grab people's attention like very early on? Obviously, yeah. you know, we can get into like editing yeah, and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, but, yeah. um, you know, uh, I guess what what is 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 there kind of like a process for you yeah, as, as far so, as like when you put things together like that? Yeah. When I started out, like, you're right. Like the, the whole I was like, you know, it was very saturated now. But like the, it was like the travel scene was such a cool thing. You know, like all these creators like going to different places, making cool edits out of like their travels and like. Um, you know, like Sam Colder, like the OG, like, uh, but like Matt Colder, or Matt Como, mm-hmm. um, you know, Roy Kramer, those guys, um, huge inspirations for me. So I think those are like my roots as far as like editing, um, like inspiration from the, from the go. But now I'm trying to move into more like a cinematic, um, realm and try and bridge the gap between that, that like content creation, uh, like travel style and like more cinematic storytelling. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I think like Matt Como does an incredible job with. Oh yeah, yeah, he's the goat. Like, amazing. Yeah. Um, also Gibson Hazard, the goat. Uh, just VFX wise, kids like nuts. Um, and he he really changed the game. I think for me, just like understanding like what is possible. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to be limited to just uh, you know like actual shots. You can like make make them in VFX, and you know you like really like your imagination is is like your you know. Yeah, what, what I like about some of his work is that, like, I, I know you, I've seen like B- BTS where he's like on stage with a freaking cell phone or like, you know, just like you know, he just has a regular DSLR and doesn't it doesn't have anything super fancy and it's you know he he's able to get these like super dope shots and transitions just from yeah, yeah. you know he's on stage with his fucking camera phone it's and not stayed. yeah so I think that I think trying to you know find my own style but like keep keep a similar. Um, I guess uh, from from the bridge the gap between that that original p like that original style and and moving forward into a more like cinematic and uh, storytelling format. Yeah, I feel like it, it definitely has that has that feel and like that that's where I kind of said like it, it still feels like that a little bit, but you know because there's obviously there's a lot of inspiration from that and that's kind of where where you got your start as far as like creating. But yeah. it 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 definitely is has taken a. a, a 
you know, more storytelling route, which I mean, I, I feel like that's what you're doing with editing. Any yeah. any kind of editing that you're doing, you you're telling a story, whether you're creating an Instagram reel, something for TikTok, a commercial, whatever it is, right. like it's all driven by the story that you're trying to convey. Yeah, I think I think like with social media, it's created uh, like um, almost like a need for. Like you said, like a lot of my work, like the in the first couple of seconds are super like engaging. I think that's like I intentionally do that because that's like almost necessary before someone like just starts scrolling. Like, you know, today it's like almost like you, it's a competition. Like, can you outdo your previous work or like, you know, people if people aren't hooked in the first couple of seconds, they're, they're just going to keep scrolling. And, and that sounds like stupid that you have to think about that. But like, that's just the world we live in today. So I think, you know having that social media understanding of like people's uh you know attention spans not you know so small that you have to get them to be like interested right away or then it doesn't matter like you know like you have to have that in mind when you're making these these like long months of drawn out incredibly like detailed pieces you also have to make sure like yo like this is going to be watched for like by like you know on social media and it has to be super quick and although you're trying to make a crazy production you have to be super like you know thought out about the strategy of how where this is living and who's seeing it and like you know i think that style of editing like very fast paced and like is is why it's it's sought after is because like people's attention span is just not what it is like they can watch an edit that's like 15 seconds to like a minute 30 um and really appreciate it and it's more effective you know, what are you going to put like 30 minute piece out? That's like, you know, super long shots. Like, I mean, that's, that's awesome. And there are, there's time for that, you know, but like, I think, yeah, I think like if you, I mean, even with, uh, you know, I, I feel with like documentary, a lot of documentary work, you know, that's kind of, you know, you've had, you have like your super long form, you know, episodic, documentaries where you know they're like you know 30 40 minutes there's like six seven episodes and and that's you know very high production but like even on social media like uh, there's there's been a i don't want to say like toned down but there's been a, a transition of, of being able to tell a similar story in a short in, in a shortened manner of yeah. like two to three minutes whether it be for you know social media or you know your facebook or whatever um there there's yeah you've kind of everybody has kind of to had to make that adjustment to you know being able to you know cater to you know everybody who's consuming on, on yeah. you know on their phones you know like i feel like that's been something like super interesting for me is that i i've always been interested in like the whole like super high end production cinematic you know storytelling on, on that end and it's been difficult for me kind of like just thinking about you know like the social media so when i see like right, your work yeah. and you know even like andrew um like a, a lot a lot of their work you know you guys' work is, is all really tailored for 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 con social media consumption right right and it's like i struggle a lot of times where like oh i get super you know focused on like oh this shot is like amazing it's like very you know i want to do a whole lot with like lighting and things like that and like nowadays a lot of you know a lot of the stuff is is consumed on the phone, and while yes, it is cool. Some stuff you can spend a lot of time like on the production, and mm -hmm. and and you know you you can focus on a lot of that attention to detail, and make it look really pretty. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really you know right. Like how effective is this? Yeah, yeah. So like how how do you blend that in with a lot of the work? I I know a lot of like your more recent work has been you know you you, you went on tour um, last year. Right. And so a lot of it has been creating, creating, you know, whether it be recaps and like the different things for social media, you know, behind the scenes of the tour. And even with like the men's national team that where, you know, you're going out to game, then you have to, you know, shoot this content. You have to chop it up. Like, yeah, it has to be ready by the morning. You know, half yeah. the time the guys are probably like, you know, just just getting back to the hotel rooms and you're, right. you know, you're transferring <laughs> footage already. Like, yeah. Cutting. yeah, literally. Uh, yeah, dude, it's, a, I mean, uh, that, that style or that, uh, I guess f format is super, um, it's very, it requires a lot of, um, long hours, I guess you're shooting and then editing and then shooting and editing, like very fast output turnaround times. Um, I mean, I love it. Uh, it's a taxing on the body, but, um, it's not like where I guess is great is my best work is cause like, I don't, you know, don't have as much time to really like put in the, you know focus on the edit uh, I just kind of have to like you know get it out there but um, I guess 
Was that thunder? Oh, is that thunder or firework? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. So, um, so where, where, where? Yeah. Um, sorry. Say your, um, what was your question again? What was that like? Just like the, no, so I, how I that guess, is and like kind of the, like, I guess the experience or what? Like, I, I guess to, we can talk a little bit about everything, but I, yeah. in particular, what has, how have you been able to, tr- you to, in, in creating that, that work that has a super fast turnaround requirement? Yeah. Um, what is your approach to capturing that content? Um, yeah. So you can have a very engaging edit and mm-hmm. be able to turn it around. You know, you, you want to be able to tell your story, have it look good, and then obviously turn it around. And you know, yeah. in m- many instances, twenty-four yeah. to thirty-six hour turnarounds. Where yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think. Well, honestly, with social, I found that like, I mean, you know, you said we talk a lot about like storytelling and telling your story, and it's. I think I don't know. It's it's uh, honestly sometimes like just a cool edit is like it does the job. Like it just like it it works. Like just making stuff look like just you know look cool or just like um oh my god i think it is thundering <laughs> oh, i'm sorry <laughs> i just saw like a lightning flash behind you. Um, it's, it's wild like so i guess for context we're filming this the day after christmas and it's like 60 degrees in ohio and like crazy. it's absurd yeah dang nuts um yeah today's actually my dad's birthday he'd be uh he would have been 60 today oh wow crazy um, anyway, so yeah, I think just um, like sometimes just making a edit like that doesn't necessarily need to be too like drawn out is like is perfect because people already think it's it's, it's cool, it gets the job done, and it's engaging, um, and obviously it makes my job a lot easier. Um, but yeah, I think it helps a lot when I'm shooting the content too. Like I know what I want. I, I shoot a lot. Like when I'm when I'm shooting, I, I shoot to edit. So I know what I have in mind as far as like shots I've gotten, like, you know, close-ups or, like, transitions, like, things that I thought about, uh, kind of, like, pre-production almost, like, as I'm shooting, Mm -hmm. um, and, like, kind of going through the edit in my head almost, like, while I'm on the go or shooting and, like, kind of just capturing moments as they happen, which is, you know, super, I guess, just on spontaneous, um, but I think that helps a lot. You know, there's been projects where I've, I've, like, for example, I worked with the national team. I did, I did some edits where I I just, like, I edited content they gave given me mm. and it wasn't like i mean i don't know it wasn't as easy to like you know i had to actually go through everything as opposed to like if i had shot everything i knew what i was looking for i could basically just cut through the footage know what i wanted and make something um same with like on tour you know you, you then again you shoot the same thing over and over it gets pretty repetitive um so you got to get creative with the shots and i think that also helps too you know you, you got a different selection of shots every time and um yeah, shooting shooting to edit is, is probably the biggest key that helps me just be as efficient as possible. Do you feel that you were able to grasp onto that uh, early on, or did you kind of have a lot of experimentation, you know, when, you know, I, I guess talk about w- when you first went on tour, uh, what, I, I don't remember exactly who, like, who the artist was, but when, yeah, yeah. so I guess who, who was the artist and, and what was that experience like, was that, you know, was that kind of like your first taste of being able to having to create and also have these like very yeah. quick turnarounds? Yeah. So, okay. So, um, I've actually, so the, art, so the artist was a uh, social house. Um, they were opening up for, well, it, actually technically it was Ariana Grande's tour. So it was her world tour and they were opening up for her. Okay. So they were the openers and it was uh, Ariana's tour. So, um, yeah, I was kind of just documenting, uh, capture all their, their content photos and videos and just like make recaps and stuff like that um but like as far as that process i think i've, I've shot um you know in the early days in college like my freshman year I, w- I would like go out to music festivals just like ask to open like to shoot the open you know someone small on the list like i don't know like you know you either go to like these music festivals and there's like the headliners and you keep going down the list like you find this the person that's like you know performing at like 2 p.m when yeah, like yeah. no one's there and so i'd reach out to them and just get like access to be able to shoot them so like i almost like it was like a given that i'd have access to be there and like so i'd shoot shoot for them and like often you know they like gonna say yes mm-hmm. like they don't no one's shooting for that like yeah so <laughs> so i would do that and then um pretty much just like that would get me access there and then i would use that to like shoot the headliners and like basically finesse my way around to just like shooting these other artists you know that are there and that kind of allowed me to have content to work with and then post like hey look like what i made of the recap of the whole music festival um so like it was kind of like a almost like a spec 
ad or spec content mm-hmm. piece that was like, you know, no one knew that I didn't get paid to do that, but it just looked like, oh wow, he made this thing that's super sick of this concert. It looks it looks legit, but like, you know, I kind of just finessed my way to be able to make that. So that was like a, a like I guess I kind of just like forced or just like on the, just like you know, in the moment, kind of would have to shoot shots as the concert's going. You know, I did that a couple times throughout my college, I guess, early college, like freshman, sophomore year. Um, and honestly, that probably helped me get the gig, like, with, with uh, you know, because all those were pretty much just, like, finessed and just, like, worked the back end. See, I didn't, I didn't even know that. So that's pretty yeah. cool that, yeah, I, I know a couple guys that have done that where they, yeah, they just kind of, you know, shoot some of, like, the early openers and just kind of, yeah, yeah, finesse their way, get a couple nice shots of some of the headliners, cool clips or whatever. And yeah. then usually, like, the promotional company ends up like, oh, yeah, this is dope right. or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Facts. So, and, and so with that, so you said that, that was, that's kind of, like, what allowed you to, to have a body of work. How, how did you come across, like, that, that yeah. social house gig? Yeah, yeah. So one of my, so a uh, kid I work with, like, pretty consistently now his name's parsa he's my kind of um he was originally the content um creator for them on the leg uh and for the ariana tour um in the u.s and in europe and then he he gets like (laughs) when he was on tour he was like 17 so he he was going back to school he was like i'm gonna go back to college he's like aiden he he reached out to me actually so we actually never met but we just knew each other through social Mm. um and so yeah, he reached out to me like, hey man, I love your work. Like, I'm I'm heading back. Like, I would love to bring you on. Like, have an opportunity for you to like come. And I was like super stoked at the time. Like, I was just like, oh my god, this is crazy. Um, yeah, I'd be down for sure. And so that kind of relationship um, sparked sparked that to be able to to link with the social house and then um, you know build that relationship with them and and uh, shoot their stuff for Ariana. What, what was that experience like? Uh, the tour was it was nuts. I mean, it was it was I guess. It's like the big, the biggest stage, I guess, in the one of the biggest stage in the world. You know, it was one of the biggest tours in the world at the time. I mean, Ariana's um, pretty, pretty. Yeah, pretty, she's pretty freaking huge. Like. She's <laughs> she's up. Yeah, she's up there, right? I yeah. think. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um. So it was it was nuts. I mean, um, you don't really get to shoot arena tours like your first tour. That's not normal. So I think. Um. But I was confident, and I just you know, like earlier I said. Um one of my biggest inspirations was, was Rory Kramer. So he's, for those who don't know, Rory's the videographer for Justin Bieber. He's worked with the Chainsmokers, like, uh, you know, Martin Garrix, every artist probably in the industry. Um, and so, like, growing up, I've, I'd watch his work, and it, his style of editing really inspired me and just, like, how he was able to capture moments on tour and raw moments. And I kind of, you know, that's just just you know it seems not normal but like that's like what it was the dream you know so mm-hmm. i kind of took that as as like a inspiration while i was there and taking that just you know it was an incredible experience i mean you come out and there's like twenty thousand people around you and you're just like pointing the camera and trying to capture angles is, is nuts it's an insane feeling but um yeah it was an incredible experience like it's it's nuts to look back now and see like just in like the matter of like two years like what the difference in like work like what i thought after that tour i was like wow this is the dopest edit i've ever made and then now i'm like wow (laughs) like i'm like that is so bad (laughs) like i'm like i wish i could like make something like that now but um yeah i think i mean it was an amazing experience i mean what were were some like the bigger biggest takeaways from that you know not only you know with working with artists and, and being around like big stages like that but you know even with like the body of work like what were some of the things that you learned and and yeah, you know, I, I feel like I haven't done like I, I I've done some like here like locally like some festivals and like shows and stuff yeah. and like that never really was I never really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean I always think it's I think it's cool like you know I, there's a lot of guys that do very dope work like you said like yourself Rory Kramer you. guys like yeah. that like they you know yeah Gibson Hazard like they do like super yeah. dope Facts. like tour footage yeah um, so like I I enjoy watching it but like I I never was able to kind of enjoy being like in there in the heat of the moment and being able to put stuff together like that so like what yeah. you know, what were some of the takeaways for, from from that yeah i think well with that specific uh example i mean their set their set they were the openers their set was only like 20 minutes so every time like it was super quick i was shooting you know i had two cameras like getting every angle i could um you know <laughs> shooting photo and video so it was very hectic running literally i was sprinting around the arena with like two two cameras in my hands so it was it was very like um 
I mean, it was amazing. Like that's, that's the dream, but um, it was hectic. And it taught me a lot to like, you know, plan, plan out, like, you know, do almost like pre-production mid, mid shoot, <laughs> like, you know, shoot to edit and like kind of just kind of have to be on the fly. And if there's, you know, a moment that looks amazing, like make sure you capture it. Um, just, I guess really just always be ready. And how, how long were you on tour with them? Uh, for about two months. Yeah. So, so you come back from tour, um, kind of like what, what, what did you get back, get, get into? Because right after that, you took that semester, that was around the time you took that semester off of school, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so kind of like, what was, what, what, what did, what did you get into when, once you came back? Uh, yeah, I came back and I mean, it was weird. Like, <laughs> um, I, first day back, I was in school and it was just weird, like going to a film class and, um, <laughs> I guess, it, I mean, it was, uh, I don't know. It was just, I don't know. I didn't feel like I was like being productive, you know? Um, I could imagine. I mean, you were, you know, you spent the last few months running around, you know, creating and, and yeah. putting out content, you know, uh, yeah. you know, almost, almost daily you was, do, you were doing something. Uh, I guess you kind of taking a step back. And yeah. It, it seems like, like it like almost, down it seemed, yeah, it seemed like a step backwards, honestly. I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't, I don't know, which it wasn't good to think about it like that, but that's just like kind of how like subconsciously I think I did. Um, but then, like I said earlier, like a couple months, you know, a month and a half goes by and then COVID. So, um, yeah. And then I guess timeline. Yeah. That's kind of how that, that went down. So, uh, so you come back, I mean, did you have, I mean, was there, did you have like any struggles or anything just kind of, you know, like either like feeling out of it, like, oh man, like I want to get back out, like creating and like doing stuff or. Yeah. Um, I mean, all of tw like all of 2020 was pretty much just like, like I said, I, I really like to like make stuff for myself. And, and I think that was a perfect time of when I was like able to experiment and learn and just really like make stuff for me um, and really just put work out that I think, or just, or just focus on the, you know, the end, the end product. Cause a lot of that time before I was just pushing out content and just to like try and get it out as quickly as possible. Not really focusing on like making it a you know complete, complete edit and just, so I think that next year really, I was trying to like make sure that everything, like all my eyes were dotted or all my eyes were, you know, dotted and T's were crossed to make sure that it was, it was good. So, so COVID hits, you go back to school you're you know creating content for yourself um roughly yeah, yeah. you know i i guess how how does that how did that turn into uh moving out to la <laughs> yeah um i mean it's always been my dream to move out to la um after i graduate but i guess i just kind of i couldn't wait <laughs> um no so um yeah i think and i, I this kind of leads into like you know so 20, 2020, um, you know, I was doing a lot of work with, uh, influencers and just like making content that I really wanted to make that was like, um, just showed my style and kind of like what I could do. And then early this year, like 2021 comes around. Um, actually, so, uh, I made a video, uh, for uh, the local soccer team, the Columbus crew, they just won the world or no, <laughs> they just won the MLS cup. And so, um, I wanted to make a video for them and just like, I grew up playing soccer and I actually grew up playing for the club, like the Academy and the okay. Academy, uh, system, like the pre-academy team. So I super like also emotionally attached to this and had just like, I'd gone through it and just really drawn out this amazing like story idea that I, I thought like would just be insane for the team. I didn't want any type of monetary like compensation I really just wanted it as like a you know kind of just like proof of concepts like what I could make and like thought what better you know reason to do than to just like um you know do it for something I love and for a team that like I've grew up supporting my entire life like so um I reached out to them to make this this piece um and I had some contacts um on the team so I I reached out and um you know their their department didn't really um, they were interested, but they weren't really, they kind of said, you know, oh, we don't really, you know, outsource our, our creative work and we don't really are not too interested. Honestly, they just kind of threw it aside and I was like, oh, well, like I'm not really looking for any compensation. I really just kind of want to make this for free and just, you know, whatever. Never got back to me, never heard anything. Um, so I was like, well, fuck it, <laughs> I'm going to make it. And so, um, I had friends on the team that were uh, generous enough to like help, like, you know, help me shoot it. Um, and we shot it in 
I don't, we didn't even use like, we didn't even get them on the field. I think I just shot, we, we literally shot one scene and the entire thing, everything else was pretty much like VFX or just like archive footage. But like I made it and um, that was like an example of like another, you know, I think I was just like taking the time to like, like work on my craft and proof, use proofed examples of like what I can make um, and like betting on myself to, to just like, you know, make pieces that I wanted to make, mm-hmm. even regardless of people maybe didn't see the vision, like I still needed to make these for, you know, because it was just like a representation of like what I could do. And so I made that and that piece, I think like it's probably one of my most proud like um, videos I've made to date, just because of like the work and like from like start to finish of everything that went into it. And so that kind of um, got me the job with the US. So um, yeah. I think that's just like I think shows just putting time into making those things. Yeah, I mean there there's there's a lot to be said. I mean, people have mentioned it before where, you know, creating like that spec spec work or ultimately just really creating the thing that you wanna the creating for the work that you wanna have. Yeah. Um, so you know, obviously you did that with, you know, getting early on like on the concert footage, doing stuff with shows and and now, you know, Mm-hmm. You said you have you have this love, this passion for soccer that you were able to kind of create something for you know for the sport that you enjoy, and yeah. it, it's it's always awesome being able to blend you know uh, different passions and, and and loves where you yeah. can you can you know you have sports and you know you're creating content. Yeah. Um, so with how how did you even go about you know like the whole uh, men's national team? Yeah. Work? So so yeah. So after I made the crew video, I kind of sent that. Uh, off um it got so um the coach the coach um saw the video and um he 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 loved it and he was like yo like i would love you to make videos for us um so and i was like amazing that'd be great like dream you know um so i was i was then brought on to do uh some of their internal content for like the uh, gold cup um which was back in july um which they won which was dope um so yeah i was like um, it was sick because that kind of like the, the crew actually I don't know their their social media team was super bitter about it, the video it was so weird really? yeah Why? it was weird I don't know I don't know what it was maybe they felt like I don't know disrespected or something I I, I reached out to them multiple times after I was like here you can have the video if you want to post it post it like mm. nothing really yeah nothing um like I mean the comments on it were just like <laughs> I don't know. Some people were kind of like, a bit, I don't know. It just seemed weird. Like in their DMs, I would, I would respond be like, hey, like you guys, like I was trying to get any acknowledgement. You know what I mean? Like I just spent like months trying to work on this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't even trying to like, I was literally like giving them this um, and <laughs> they just left me on scene and DMs. So I was like, oh, oh, wow. well, well, never. But I mean, at least like it, it obviously got me a job with the US. So I, it wasn't wasn't too, too bitter about it. Um, and I, I made what I wanted to make, but it was just weird. Um, I, I found that like, you know, working with a lot of people, the corporate, it's hard to get the, the communication between the creative and the corporate world. So like understand the vision, you know, like, mm. so that's, I think something I'm working on a lot is like communicating that, that vision. Um, because it's, it's, just, it's really hard to get people to understand what you're trying to say. And that you can't really, they don't get it until they have like something to see. Like if yeah. I were to show them that video, they're like, oh yeah, sick. But you know, I don't have that made yet, so. Yeah, and it's interesting too. And like, I don't know if it's it's unique to sports because I feel like with, you know, I guess some, some of the you know, more traditional, sport, I guess soccer is pretty, I mean, soccer is pretty big now. But, um, you know, like with like baseball or like football or basketball, I feel like I, there's, like the whole SMS world, sports, social media, social yeah. media, sports world. It's I, I've always f- felt that that world is is everybody's kind of very collaborative and and very easy going. So it's interesting hearing that that you kind of didn't really yeah. experience that. And nah. I don't know. I don't know if it's probably unique to soccer, um, but like I know we've had um, um, we've had previous guests before where they you know, work with OSU basketball and then they've been able to transition into, you know, working with the NFL and NBA and, and things like that. Um, like I've always felt like that, that SMS world has been, it's, it's a very been a tight knit community. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting right. seeing, seeing that, that you kind of f- felt that way. I mean, and you know, re- regardless of, of, you know, of however it was received, like you were able to, you know, create this awesome piece of content that was I well received by, you yeah, know, yeah. Anybody who who viewed it, so I think that was awesome, and you were able to to, to leverage that and, and use that yeah. to, you know, do do something bigger. So like I, I guess so you you know, 
reached out to so you reached out to the U.S. men's national team mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. and you got plugged in with that. What was what was that experience like? Because now don't like so like now you're going from you know having been on you know on a on a tour working with musicians and, and artists yeah. and kind of you know it's it's a different it's a consider it a big change of pace where you're creating content for you know for shows and and even just like the type of people that you're you're surrounding yourself with and, and working with what what was that like with working with the men's national team which is it's weird because it's not only like a professional sports team but you have you know like a collection of like superstars and it's you know you're like on a national stage yeah not for sure i think it's a it's a drastic con- comparison like different between like art musical artists and working with uh like um professional athletes i think um the professionalism of like the people around this the team i think is is like is just different overall like in the music industry people are a lot more laid back um it's not not like to hate on on the people in the music industry it's just completely different in the way things are run um just like facts um people and i think just sports seems like you know you're dealing with especially covid like the health of of like these athletes is is crucial um, and everyone, everyone's like, you know, just like, <laughs> it's just dialed in statistically, like, you know, whether it's data, um, you know, preparing for the game or whatever it is, like it's, it's another level of preparation that goes into it. Whereas like, I think musical, I think people have done this show like so many times, it's kind of the same. Whereas like with athletes, it's, it's like, it's a whole other competition. Every game matters. Every game is different. Um, it was like a show it's like been rehearsed and you know it's kind of just how it is and it's a lot more chill you know there's a lot less that is like maybe like it's not as big like stakes you know um so there's a lot more intensity i guess you'd say in uh the professional athlete world um yeah was there any difference with you know having to you know obviously you still have quick turnarounds with that but were you were you working by yourself creating that content or were you yeah. kind of like part of a team so yeah, actually, so two other guys uh, would would be shooting their content for their social media, and they would also like give me access to their content that I could uh, shoot choose from and like incorporate in the edits as well. Um, but I was the only one editing. Okay, and and so was that the reason why you moved out to LA, or was no? Nah, this was just this was actually so I moved out to LA um, like mid May, and then this was in July. Um, um yeah so i just moved out to like literally just moved out to la like a month in and then i got this gig and so i was only in la for like a month and then dipped and then was with the team till like the end of july and then august um and then it was just kind of like how how it worked out as far as like work but it, it wasn't i was already moving out to la regardless um and what, what were some of the like what really like what what drove you to to make that decision to like yeah like like time to pack it up let's go yeah i mean i've always i wanted to i thought it would be smart or i thought it'd be wise at least to to get out to la a couple months before like originally my plan is to was to move out to la after i graduated um just kind of where the industry is honestly um and i thought it'd be smart to you know know people out there and make connections before i make the full on leap and just like so i thought originally like oh go like the summer before like next technically like this upcoming summer would have been the originally planned like move to mm-hmm. LA um and I thought you know oh I should like go out there for the summer and make connections just meet people um you know just get my foot in the door so you know it's not like I'm just moving out there and have nothing um it's kind of just planning ahead for the next year um and yeah just I guess it just kind of I just I haven't come back yet <laughs> um but yeah that was the goal originally was just to go out there and make connections and um I guess that was just that opportunity was just fell fell on my lap like amongst the whole thing um and that's just i guess how, how it kind of worked out and i mean what other stuff have you been you know obviously you said that the the men's national team that was like over the summer are you still like creating content for them now and like what 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 kind of what kind of things are you getting yourself into now as far as like work and, and content wise so i haven't been working with them too much um recently i've actually i mean i've kind of been working on something similar to what i did with the crew with them um at the moment more commercial based not really like internally um so i'm in the process right now of, of working with a video hopefully for them for like the world cup cool yeah for the world cup uh yeah in qatar so like this next next year yeah so in production right now but 
nothing nothing's uh i guess guaranteed but still still in the process um but yeah that's like probably the biggest um thing that i'm working on um with them um but yeah um other th- other things i guess that i've i've been doing um i guess just a lot a lot of like um social media stuff uh, i've been doing stuff here and there with like zach king um other stuff like producers like in the music space um a bunch of like uh collaborators with Ari um so a bunch of producers with um in Social House as well um so still working with them a lot which is great and then um just doing uh, a lot of my own stuff trying to make things uh put in place so that I can you know I I really want to be able to, to to work on things that I want to do not not be forced to having to do you know a lot of these like I think a lot of creators can get in a trap of like having to do work that to to survive and not being able to do work that they want to do and also you know um, be creatively fulfilled I mean do you feel have you had to do that like in your time out in LA and like for sure yeah I think yeah exactly so like I, I think it's great that I'm I made it early but like you know I do always struggle with that, like, damn, like, this is kind of, like, I'm just doing this, whether it be for the money in the meantime, where, like, it's, like, but it's also building a connection for later on, which I know will be able to leverage, and, and, and they know my worth, so it's, like, okay, later on, I don't have to necessarily uh, be doing the, you know, the not-so-much-fun. <laughs> so, so I mean, like, what kind of stuff are you doing now? Like, you mentioned, like, Zach King, like, he's, like, really big in yeah. the VFX world. And right, right, right. So, yeah, I have a lot of friends that work with him that are producers um, that work for him internally. And so that I'm outsourced a lot, like, um, so I'm a freelance, so I get freelance jobs, okay. like, basically all my stuff's freelance. Um, so, yeah, I'll get outsourced to, like, shoot or ma- mainly just shooting um, and just, which is cool because I get to see, like, the production and how, like, all the VFX goes down and stuff like that, um, which, you know, I can now, I guess, bring home and, and incorporate into my own work. Um, and that's that's really what I want to do, you know, um, just, like, put all the time and stuff, like, like uh, creative projects like that. Um, and kind of move into more like a directing route. So, I mean, so that, I mean, that's one of the cool things about being able to collaborate with, you know, not only collaborate, but work with a lot of different creators because everybody has a different way of doing things that you're able to just absorb that, take, be able to take right. a little bit from here, a little bit from there. And, yeah. then, you know, it turns out to this thing that you create, you know, you're able to take a lot of those experiences and, and channel them into your own work. So I, I guess with that being said, like what, what is it that you want to do? Like what, what are the kind of things that you want to do? moving forward yeah i mean i think um uh yeah i mean moving forward i I think just being able to work towards a a place where i'm able to um kind of call the shots as far like i'm I'm not even close to that point yet but i think that's somewhere i want to be in the future is is kind of uh, a director um editor um but you know (sighs) um yeah, I guess it's just it takes time, um, you know. You oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So I mean, I, I guess with the, I guess what I want to say is like what you know what ultimately like what do you see yourself you know doing like you know you, you yeah. mentioned that you don't want to get caught so much into the kind of like doing doing the things for you know to keep the lights on, pay the bills. But, oh yeah, yeah. You know what what exactly is it that yeah, you, I think that you're trying to strive for? Like yeah, you know. The direct, like, yeah, I, right. I understand directing, but I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is what, you know, like, what, what kind of work? Do you want to be doing, like, commercials? Do you want to be commercial, stuff media? Like, short film, I think more so, like, campaign stuff uh, for, for different, maybe, brands or um, um, social figures or just um, more mainstream um, stuff, I think. Bringing that, like, whole digital, uh, or not digital, but more, like, social media editing style to a mainstream uh you know, audience, I think is, is what I want to do. Um, uh, but yeah, I think that's like kind of where I want to go with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool that you mentioned that. Cause I feel like a lot of, a lot of the content content now that's being created by some of these like big brands, right. um, it's, it has, it's, it's starting to kind of take that route because yeah. now in the age of you TikTok it, and right? social media, like, yeah, you, you definitely see that transition. I mean, heck, like I've seen a lot of creatives that are kind of in that space that are, you know, collaborating working you know like the Boses and right, you know yeah. big, big brands like that that are kind of reaching out collaborating with these creators social media creators or yeah. content creators that you know they're creating 
you know, they're, 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 cre- they're, they're being able to bring their, uh, their expertise and their style of, of creating mm-hmm. in, you know, with these like household names. Right. And it's, you definitely see a big, you know, there's big, a big shift, you know, right. towards that space. So it's kind of cool that, you know, you kind of want to get into that. Yeah. It's a long road, but you know, that's the goal for sure. And have you, I mean, have you, have you been able to kind of, what what are you working on right now to kind of hack your way into that? Because it seems like that's right. kind of you know that that's what that's yeah, what you've you done up to this to, point, right? You have to you kind of have to hack your way into it, right? Like no one's gonna give you a chance unless they know like what you're capable of. Um, so yeah, like I said, like like the the piece, I, I don't want to like it's nothing's like official or, or like I've been working on this you know kind of pitch for the national team, um, and things have been you know back and forth. It's not like guaranteed, um, but like like ultimately I'm prob- I'm going to make it disregarding like whether you know um they want to go with yeah it exactly yeah. like it's going to be made like I want to make it um so I think that's right now my biggest thing it's definitely the biggest project I've I've like kind of created for myself um at, at first it was just going to be a quick a quick thing like a recap of like what I did with the team originally like the gold cup and then I was like no nah, I, I need to make the, like go just all in on it and so it slowly turned into this massive like piece of like this trailer slash recap or slash like of the the recent years and building of you know U.S. men like U.S. soccer um, and like kind of preparing and looking forward and hyping up for the World Cup like the next year. So yeah, that's I've been you know it's definitely the biggest um, logistical and from a directing standpoint, like I'm directing other creative people now. Um, as far as like the pre-production and trying to communicate the vision of what I want it to be and, and other artists as well. And like the FX artists and like the whole thing, like even like scoring the the track for mm-hmm. the music, like it's a very intense, like everything has to work together from like my vision. So it's very like, I'm now directing other people as opposed to like just doing my own thing. I mean, what, what, what's that, what has that experience <laughs> been like, you know, obviously because you know, yeah. when you're when you're creating yourself, you you know what you want, you know what you need, and, and yeah, it's um, how, how overwhelming and scary. And a lot of times, I'm like, holy shit, I'm way over in my head. But I think that's what it's supposed to be. I mean, what are some challenges that you've had? Um, well, um, challenges. I think, um, well, it's a lot, it's very logistic logistically challenging to do um incorporate vfx and animation and raw footage and like digital footage and making it seem cohesive and also like seamless Mm -hmm. um so making sure and i'm and none of these people are collaborating together i'm the only one that is telling them what to do right (laughs) um as of now like this has been my experience so far. So, and I think I'm, I'm planning as things get more, um, you know, past like the first, um, first looks of like VFX and stuff like that. I think it'll be easier to kind of cohesively merge things. Um, but from, you know, getting ideas onto paper, like from head to, to, you know, actual renderings of them and seeing how it's all going to work together. That's been like the most difficult because when you look at a finished piece, you're like, wow, that's, that's awesome. That's sick. Like it all worked together, but like it didn't. And if you wanted to recreate that, it might not be that hard, but it didn't start out like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like it's just a puzzle. It's just, you're constantly solving problems. You're constantly like, for example, like the, the video I made for the, the crew, like that, that soccer video, like that wasn't what I originally wanted to make. That was almost like a sacrifice of like, all right, I just need to put this out and just get it out. Like, cause I was like, I was like, what I originally wanted to make would have been like 10 times more, uh, like complex. Wow. But I was like, nah, dude, you just, (laughs) you gotta just like sacrifice. Like you just need to get the freaking thing out. So it was like, yeah. Um, it, because it's a lot of moving pieces, (laughs) um, of like stuff you don't know. Um, it's not like I, I sought out to make this from start to finish with, you know, uh, a storyboard of like, because a lot of this is just, I'm kind of using footage from the internet and I'm kind of limited on what I can use, mm-hmm. which is why I'm adding all these extra like um, assets and stuff so that I can kind of almost, um, I don't know, um, that it works with the whole thing. Right, right, right. So I, I guess as we kind of start to wrap up, yeah. what 
what would you say or, or you know do you have any bits of advice for someone who is i mean i, I guess i mean you have you you have a, a pretty pretty robust experience where you know you say so you kind of have have experience working you know working on tours and working with professional athletes and with teams and big organizations you know what are some of the biggest takeaways you know in like your freelancing and your creative journey so far that uh you know could probably help somebody who's like experiencing this for the first time or maybe wants to get into that you know like i I know i I can speak for myself with working with like on with professional athletes and like working with like team content a lot of times some some organizations have like you know you're like you're out on the field and you like you get a quick clip like whether you're getting like a touchdown or something you literally have to go with a memory card go to somebody and jump that footage and there's somebody else on the other end that's like editing that footage yeah like i've, I've done that like in some football that's games crazy. where you like you you know get a couple clips take some pictures and then you literally run it back you know like yeah. at the end of the quarter during a timeout or something to or, or like a big touchdown happens you have to go back and, and get the footage and there's somebody and there's somebody that's like editing wow. and like yeah, yeah. That, that's like how, live. <laughs> yeah, and and that's why, like, I don't know if you ever noticed, like, a lot of like NFL teams, colleges, and things like that, like, they you know they're able to put things out so, so fast. fast. Like, they have teams of people. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's like a team. You know, they'll have like their dedicated editors or shooters, and then yeah. you know you kind of have somebody kind of right. directing everybody and making mm-hmm. sure that hey, yeah. this is what this is what we're going for. So it's um it's 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 unique and it's like a different world. You know, like obviously you're still working fast paced, but I, I guess. On the tour side, like what is if somebody wants to get into, you know, shooting tours, sh- shooting, you know, shows mm-hmm. like, you know, do you, what's some advice for, for somebody who wants to get into that space? Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's probably my advice with anything like you want to get into is like almost like you you have to provide value, um, you know, work with what you can. Right. Like, I guess. um like it's possible to, you know, reach out to people and stuff, but like no one's going to work with you if you don't have anything to show. So you have to like make, you can, you can just like kind of level up slowly. And then um, as you like able to have access to other things, use that to get access to the next level and then use that. You know what I mean? Like, um, like clearly like <laughs> I haven't, I, I haven't always gotten a yes. So it's like, even though I don't get a yes and a lot of times it's, it's like a no, it's you don't always can't, can't take no you know you sometimes you get to still do it and make it um or create something out of scratch like and and use that as proof um and maybe not yeah maybe not just take no i think a lot of people it's 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 hard to get your foot in the door so you you just gotta i guess find a way to provide the most value um you gotta get your foot in the door regardless one way or another one way or the other um so yeah, I guess whether it's like reaching out to a manager or just taking photos, taking videos, creating relationships is huge as well. Like that's the biggest thing I think that is undervalued is, is relationships with people. Um, I mean, honestly, like that, that's probably, um, you know, if, if there's, if there's anything for anybody to take away in, and I feel like, I mean, this, this is, these are like life principles, you yeah. know, not even just in a creative space, but um, business in it, general, it, it really is important The those relationships that you foster, right. it, it, they play such a big role. And I, I feel like sometimes <sighs> like, yes, your work has to be good. Obviously you want to be able to have a body of work and be able to have the skill to like, you know, do these things, but mm-hmm. you know, you don't necessarily have to be like yeah. the goat right now to, to be able to, 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 to get, to, to get those opportunities. And, and a lot of it is really driven by those relationships that you foster, whether, right. you know, you do go work for somebody or you, you know, even just, Oh my God. <laughs> You know whether you're doing good work for somebody or or even just letting somebody know that hey i can do this or i have this ability um it's 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 so crucial because not only does it you know in, in our space it, it leads to being able to get more work literally like i was able to film some interviews here in like in the midwest because of like one of the guys that one of the, the CEO of the of this creative agency, he, you know, like I interact with him on social media and mm-hmm. literally got a DM one day. He was like, hey, you're he thought, he, he thought I was up in Cleveland. So he's like, hey, uh, you know, how far is Cleveland from you? I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's a couple hours away. So he's like, hey, I have this, you know, we're, you know, working with this, you know, with with, uh, with this client. We have this interview that needs to be filmed. Yeah. You know, is, is this something you're able to do? I like, I know you're in Ohio, but like I, you know, I'm trying to figure out like what, you know, what, you know, how far it was. Cause I think initially it was supposed to be in Columbus. Mm-hmm. And then, then he hit me up. He's like, 
you know, it's like, oh, it's up in Cleveland. I don't know if you still want to do it. I'm like, oh, yeah, so I'm, I'll drive up to Cleveland. It's not that, you know, it's not yeah. that, that uh, it's not that far, but literally just off of this connection that I made online, you yeah. know, whether it be just like li- liking or just interacting with somebody that, mm-hmm. you know, it was able, to, you know, a couple years down the road, you know, he was like, hey, yeah, it's, uh, I let him know that this is the kind of work that I do. Like right. I'm in the area and. Um, you know, like little things like that, I, I feel like it plays such a big role in, mm-hmm. you know, getting work, whether it is, you know, reaching out to somebody via, via DMs or, or on, you know, in person or whatever. That right. It's, it, it's really about those relationships that you foster that yeah. I feel like even I feel like pretty much all the work that I've been able to do to this day has been driven by some kind of relationship, some kind of, you know, interaction that I've had with somebody else that either got me an opportunity to do another job or, maintain um, the client or yep, something. Yeah. yeah exactly so i mean there, there definitely is a, is a lot to be right. said about that and that's probably like i i guess the the most important like piece of advice that you can give you know obviously there's yeah. like technical things or, and whatnot but oh um, i mean at the end of the day people just want to work with cool people yeah yeah like yeah like no one's gonna work with you if you're a dick yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> or you know like it's you know i i yeah there's it, it really is about you know like the, the those relationships uh, you know a good friend of mine Josh Emmerich uh, he's been a guest on a podcast somebody that I work with a lot nowadays um, his his whole like mantra is you know experiences and relationships so like even you know like when he's ta- you know taking these like discovery calls or talking to clients and stuff like mm-hmm. a lot of it is, is really driven by the experience and um, like I, I admire him a lot because not only he, is he able to, you know, establish, make, make these uh, experiences great for his clients, but also working on, on set with him that he, he pays so much attention to detail of like, hey, like these are the, you know, these are the things that we're going to do to, you know, have a successful shoot so my client can be happy. But I also want you guys to, you know, whoever I'm having on set that I want you guys to be able to either learn something, take away anything, be able to have a good time to where, you know, yeah. Every everything it seems is is seamless. So like for me, I've you know it's 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 cool because he's able to take. Hey, I know that you want to do this thing. I know you want to get into more DP or you know you want to be, you know, directing or whatever. Like he 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 cares about that and he's able to, um, you know, kind of blend that into to the work that we're doing. To not only it gives you opportunity to grow. Mm-hmm. And and have it, have fun on set and you enjoy being on set. So sometimes we're yeah. we're doing like the most boring like work we're like interviewing you know like <laughs> yeah the, just like the, corporate stuff yeah you, yeah but it's still like enjoyable right like, it's still enjoyable because like you're learning and like i mean and you end up being friends with you know you end yeah. up making connections and stuff so it, it makes it fun and yeah. enjoyable so i i think be being able to have uh being able to have working relationships like that it, it, it's yeah. really cool and like i i strive to i would like to strive to be able to do that with a lot of the work that you know we're doing i mean hell we're we're here talking now right, because yeah. you know we a relationship got us you know yeah i think you know and going off of that like you just said you know the experience you're you, what you're selling a service you know so i think everything you bring to the table is is ever is the entire either plus or negative to what you bring as well you know are you like you know is all the baggage you bring good or bad? Right. Like when you're there, are you, you know, can you hold your own? Are you chilling? Do you not need to be, you know, looked after? Can you as well as create a great service and then products? Like, you know, it's as well like you're in the, you know, service of like being just a great asset. What comes with that? Like, oh, like was was your content like not only amazing, but were you just like, you know, being annoying the whole time. Were you like, how was the experience that the client, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's like a huge thing too. Not only are you really talented, but can you also just be a cool person and just like, you know, be fun to be around? Cause at the end of the day, these people are gonna spend long weeks, months with you. That's I think such a crucial part that's maybe not emphasized enough. Like at the end of the day, as talented as you are, no one's gonna work with you if you're just annoying. Right. Or if you're like, you know, have a lot of emotional trauma or like whatever it is like that's being brought on to the you know with you like it just makes everything more easy if you you know if you're chill to be around and just a great um you know it's all about the experience right like you're selling an experience you're selling a, a product a service so it's all about the experience i think yeah i think that's a good way to end it i'm 
Is there anything else that you'd like to share? You know, like I know, I know you said, you know, uh, when we started that you were kind of nervous uh, as far as yeah, like, I always what? get nervous talking on podcasts. I don't know. I, I Why, man? We just chopping up. A, yeah, I know. I, I think now I'm a lot more chill, but I think I, I've, I think I overthink uh, when I'm in the flow for sure. I'll just, I'll just ramble, and I think you know, it's I get caught up in my words and stuff. So yeah, no, I'm chill now. I'm chill now. Yeah. I mean, is there, you know, is there anything <laughs> else that you'd like to add? You know, as as you know, as a closing thought for you know for any of the listeners. <sighs> um, I'd say bet on yourself. I mean, take the chance. Um, I mean, this is kind of just something I've learned myself is you kind of, you gotta put in the work, um, learn as much as you can build amazing relationships, work with as many people, um, and, and really just bet on yourself. Um, even if the answer is no, I think it'll work out in the long run and, and be worth it for sure. Um, yeah. So I guess well, let's, I think that's a good way to, to wrap it up. So with that being yeah. said, you know, Aiden, thank you for coming on. Thanks um, for having can me. Can you, man. you know, plug in your socials, anything that you want to plug in at the end so people can, you know, find you on social media and, and reach out, whether it is they want to ask for some advice, check out some of your cool work and just kind of keep in touch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, just Aiden Minton on, uh, on Instagram. Yeah. Sweet. So oh, yeah. Aiden, Thanks, thank man. you again for coming on the creative block. And with that being said, Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, bro. Sweet. This has been dope.